Hey everybody, it's Brian House here for Housework and today we are going to build a DC motor controller to run an old treadmill motor from parts we bought on eBay for around 20 bucks. Now you might ask yourself like, why do I want to do this? Well, in this case I'm building a 2x72 grinder sander. It's like a big belt grinder and sander. And to go to a store or buy one online brand new, they're a couple thousand dollars and uh, I just don't want to invest that kind of money. Plus, I really love projects like this, so building something is always uh, going to be my choice. Uh, in this case, I took all the parts that I purchased on eBay, and that's, it's actually only two parts that we really need to make this happen, and repurposed an old power supply from a computer. It was very simple to put together, didn't require any soldering, or you don't really need to be an electrical engineer to do this. This is something very easy to do. These treadmill motors are readily available on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist. You'll probably have to buy the whole treadmill and then cut it up and you know harvest whatever you want out of it. In my case, I actually sold the controller board on eBay for almost the same amount of money as I spent on the entire treadmill itself, which was about $80. Uh, anyhow, this is a real simple process. So I'm gonna give you a brief demonstration of how this works. Again, we are converting AC power to DC. It is a very simple thing. All right, so we're gonna click on the power. Uh, in this case, the fan that was in the power supply actually is a 12 volt DC power supply, which the motor controller outputs 12 volt DC. So um, I just went ahead and used it for cooling, which is kind of important. The potentiometer on this particular one is 220K, which is about right for what we want to do. So I didn't even bother to swap it out. So let's turn the potentiometer up just slightly and see what we get. All right, so it's moving kind of slow. These motors were designed to do that because, you know, when you're on a treadmill, you can ramp up and down and so on. These motors are, are designed to actually handle that. And let's turn it up, see what we can do. That's about halfway. Three quarters of the way. And, uh, let this thing ramp down here. I'm not gonna bother turning it all the way up because it really doesn't ever need to go that fast. Uh, so you can see there are many uses for something like this. I have seen people put them in band saws, grinders, sanders, all kinds of things. And uh, to know how to do this, to make this work for cheap, is actually really useful for your home workshop. So come along with me on this process. I'll show you how we did it. Really simple, right here on housework. Stay with us. So the first step to doing this is to take apart the controller that you got from eBay. We're really only going to use the bottom plate portion of it, the fan and the potentiometer, but we're going to mount the potentiometer on the outside of the power supply so we can take that out as well. Now we turn to the power supply itself. We have to take it apart. In this case, there's probably about six screws that are holding this thing together. Um, when you're doing this, you really just want to take the cover off and get it open. Now, something to think about when you're pulling one of these apart is the capacitors, which are those big cylindrical looking things. They're black. Uh, they may still have power in them. So just uh, take uh, special care when you're pulling one of these apart. You don't want to shock yourself. I'm going to use the backing plate and I took two measurements just to see where the screws could go, drilled holes in those plates and put it back in and mounted it in. Now the reason I did this was because cooling is an issue always when you're doing anything like this and I wanted the heat sink and all the electronics to sort of hover on the inside of the case itself and I wanted it to be easily mountable as well. So that just made sense to me. Next, I'm trying to figure out exactly where I wanna put the potentiometer and the power switch on this thing. You don't have a ton of room in these little power supplies, so it's kind of important that you really take a look at how much depth and where it's gonna go exactly, and then also, how are you gonna mount it on whatever you're building? So. 
Um, I ultimately decided on this particular configuration, which is the potentiometer on one side and the power switch on the other. There really wasn't a ton of room in there anywhere else to do this because I'm going to lay it flat on the 2x72 sander. As you can see here, I'm using hot glue to mount this thing. I love hot glue. It works. Don't judge me. All right, so now our switch is mounted. We are going to make sure that we have the potentiometer nice and tight in there and add the knob. That's kind of important since it's something you need to hold on to. Just make sure it's tight. All right, now we're going to look at the layout for the wiring and insert the AC wire from the old treadmill power cord. The green is the ground, the black is the hot, and the white is the neutral. Now, AC current stands for alternating current, and it doesn't really matter which pole on the AC input side you use. You can switch them back and forth, and it won't matter one bit. Okay, so I briefly want to go over the wiring configuration for this thing. Um, just so you're aware of what each thing is, this is the AC motor controller. It's this whole piece with the heat sink on it. This is, uh, comes from eBay for about 10 or 15 bucks. This guy is the bridge rectifier. That's actually what converts AC over to DC power. And this big black line that's over here, this came with the treadmill. This is the wall outlet cord. So that's what's coming. That's what's bringing in the AC power to this whole situation. Uh, you have a switch. This I just harvested from the treadmill itself. The fan, which is up inside of this case, and the potentiometer, which is here. And it has a, a fancy little connector here that just plugs right into the board down in here. Uh, real quick, this is super simple. Three wires coming out of the wall outlet cord. Uh, a black, a white, and an earth or a green color. The black goes over to the switch because it's hot. There's a red wire that comes back over to one of the poles on the AC input side of the AC motor controller. And then the other, the white one, just goes into the other pole. These are interchangeable. As long as they're input AC, it doesn't matter which side you put it into. This blue wire and this white wire are the AC output. Again, totally interchangeable. Doesn't really matter which pole you choose that goes over to the bridge rectifier. Now, there is one label on this bridge rectifier and it is right here that you really wanna pay attention to. It says AC. Bridge rectifiers run diagonally. So if this pole is AC, this pole is AC. So that is why you see the blue wire coming from the AC output and the white wire coming from the AC output poles over to these two poles here on the bridge rectifier. Now this red and this black go out to the motor. So you can see how simple this setup is. Again, these are interchangeable as long as it's AC and DC. Doesn't really matter. If you swap out the DC poles, these two, you can take this black wire and put it on this red wire and vice versa. It will just simply change the direction of the motor. It won't blow it up, it won't blow anything up. It'll just continue to work, but change the direction. If you have any questions about this project, please go down to the comment section and leave me a comment below. I do read them and respond to all of them. Also, there are links down in the description that show you exactly what I purchased to make this happen. You need a 10,000 watt SCR motor controller and a bridge rectifier. Those are the two main key components. And again, there's links down there that will take you to exactly what I used. Also, if you found this video useful, hit that subscribe button and the like button. It does help me out a lot. As always, I do appreciate you. My name is Brian House, and this is Housework.